Okay then gang, so next I want to talk about another data type in Go, maps. So at first glance, these are a little bit like dictionaries in Python or objects to a lesser extent in JavaScript. Now they're made up of key and value pairs. And like Python, the keys can be of multiple different types. So they could be strings or integers or floats, etc. But all of the keys in a single map must have the same type. And also all of the values in a single map must have the same type too. So for example, we could have a map where the keys are all integers and the values are all strings or something like that. Okay, so let's do a few examples. So I'll create a new variable called menu and I want to set it equal to a map. So colon equal to, and then it's going to be a map. And we need to specify the type of the keys in square brackets. Now the type of our keys are going to be strings. So I'll say string. And then outside of the square brackets, what type are the values going to be? In our case, they're going to be a float 64. So all of the keys are strings and all of the values are going to be float 64s. And then curly braces. So now we can just have different key value pairs. So the first key could be something like soup, because this is a menu. It's going to be the items and the prices, and then a colon, and then the price, which is going to be $4.99. All right, and then we do a comma at the end of it. And then the next one is going to be pie, and then the price of that is going to be $7.99, then a comma. And then we'll do a salad, and the price of that is going to be $6.99, and then a comma. And then finally, we'll just do toffee pudding. And the price of that is going to be $3.55. Now, we need a comma also after the last one as well. Otherwise, it's going to give us an error. So put a comma there as well. All right, then. So let's try printing this out. I'm going to say fnt.print line. And we want to print out the menu. Also, I'm going to print out a single item. So I'll say fnt.print line. And we want to take the menu, but we also want to get the value of one of the items. So all we have to do is say square brackets and then pass in whatever the key is. So for example, if I want to get the price of the pie, I'd pass in the string pie. Now we don't just say pie like this because we have to pass in a string. The key is a string. So it has to be in quotes, all right, like that. And then that's going to give us this value. So let me save this now and let's try running this. So go run main.go. We don't need that other file anymore. And hopefully we should see those two things printed down here. So this is the map with all the key value pairs. And then this is the price of the pie. Awesome. So that's working. Okay, then. So what about if we want to loop through a map? We can do much like we loop through arrays or slices. So let me do a comment to say looping maps. And then I'll say for, and this time we get the key and the value. So it's not the index anymore, it's the key. We get this, which is this, and the value, which is this. And we do the same thing, colon equals range menu, which is what we're cycling through. And then I'll just print out the key and the value. So I'll say print, or rather fmt.print line, and we'll say key, first of all, then we'll do a dash and then we'll output the value. So let me give this a whirl. Go run main.go. And now we can see all of these different items being printed out as we loop through it. Awesome. Cool. So we can also use different types, like I said, as these keys. So let's do another example down here. I'm going to create a comment, first of all, to say ints as key type. All right then, so this time I'm going to call the variable phone book and I'll set that equal to a map where this time the keys are going to be of type int and the values will be strings. So inside curly braces, now I'm just going to paste in a few different properties. So we have the ints right here as the keys, which are kind of like the phone numbers, if you like. And then we have the name of the person with that phone number. All right. So let's try printing some of this out i'm going to say fmt.print line and we'll just print out the phone book in its entirety first of all but also then a single item so fmt.print line and we'll print out phone book and then in square brackets oops that needs to go inside the parentheses let me place that in here so we'll take this key 
and we'll paste it in here and we should now get Mario as the value printed out. Okay then, so let me save this and test this out. So let me run the file again. And now we can see this is the map with all the keys and the values. And then this is Mario, which is the value of this key right here. Okay, cool. So what if we want to update an item inside the map? Let's try that. So I'm going to say phone book, and then I'm going to open up my square brackets, and then I'll grab one of these things for the key, and say I want to update that item. Well, all I do is say that's now equal to a different string, Bowser, for example. Now, it has to be a string because we said here all of the values are strings. And if I place something else here, we get an error. So it has to be a string. So now if I print out the phone book, fmt.print line and the phone book, we should see that updated value. So I'm also going to do another example. So let me copy this and paste it down here. And this time I'm going to get the last one. Copy that, paste it in here and change that to Yoshi. Save it. Let's try this out now down here. I'm going to run this. And we can see this is the original map right here. Then we change the last item to Bowser. And then we change the middle item right here to Yoshi. So that works. So dead easy, right? So again, maps allow us to store key value pairs where the keys can be different types and the values can be different types as well. But in a single map, all of the keys must be the same type and all of the values must be the same type as well.